Good evening, teacher. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, teacher. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Okay, this is the um, almost the end of this course. Uh, we have just this night and tomorrow. And before we uh, beginning with the topic, I have a question. Um, los que tenían problemas con la plataforma, eh, intentaron hacer las actividades, pudieron hacerlas o todavía siguen teniendo problemas con la plataforma. Eh, yo hablé hoy en la tarde eh, para decir que, que teníamos problemas con lo del audio. Me dijeron que lo iban a revisar hoy en la tarde. Entonces, eh, yo voy a ingresar a la plataforma después de terminar la clase para ver si puedo hacer lo último del examen final. Ok, ok. Eh, espero que ya para cuando entre a la, a la plataforma ya pueda realizar el examen. ¿Los demás eh, terminaron, lograron terminar? ¿Tienen problemas? ¿O cómo van? Yo he terminado. Okay. Yo también, Yo también Amazing. Dije. Good. Good evening, okay. everybody. I'm finished. Good evening. Oh, that's good. Yo por la cuarta este, pregunta voy. Del meet there. Del examen. Ah, ok. Sí. Ok, ok. Eh, para los que no habían podido avanzar o los que van algo retrasados, recuerden que ya mañana se termina lo que es este curso. Así que si tienen problemas con la plataforma o con algunos ejercicios, todavía están a tiempo para que lo resuelvan. Acuérdense que mañana se termina y los que no han avanzado o van atrasados, pues si no logran terminar lo que es verdad el, el, el trabajo de la plataforma, no van a poder seguir con el otro curso y no se les va a dar el certificado que se les entrega, ¿verdad? Así que si están teniendo problemas con la plataforma o algo por el estilo, pueden comunicarse, ¿verdad? Los grupos para eh, que puedan terminar ya para el día de mañana que se termina ya este curso. Ok. Eh, now, we are going to continue with the topic of future tenses. Eh, this week, we... Um, we were talking about the structures going to and will. Now we are going to uh, talk about the other um, words that we can use or other structures that we can use to talk about the future. And then we are going to make a review of all of the tenses. Uh, we know that we have three tenses in English, that is the past, the present, and the future. Now we are going to end the future uh, tense and then we are going to make a review of the present tense and the past that is maybe tomorrow we are going to end with the review of all the tenses because it is very important that we uh, can uh, remember some information about the tenses so now we are going to end the topic of tenses mm, it's not like a review of going to and will. We are going to talk about going to and will, but we are going to talk about another uh, structures to talk about a uh, future. So it is a uh, complete information about the future and the uses. So uh, like we are going to begin saying this, just like the past and the present tense, there is more than one future tense in English. We have more than one future tense. This change depending on the, fun the functions and what we want to say. So it is saying that in English, we have more than one um, a future tense. It is not just one. It is uh, depending on the function or it is depending on what we want to say. 
to express something or to make some actions in the future. And today we are going to look at four future tenses. We are not just going to see one future tense. We are going to see four. In uh, the future, we have the future simple, the future continuous, the future perfect, and the future perfect continuous. We have four. Uh, we will show uh, some uh, things that we need to know about the, the, the tense and how to do some uh, sentence in uh, future, right? We are going to start. Let me share the screen because we are going to um, see the uh, sentence and the structures and all the information. So we are going to start with the future tense. And you already, already know that we are going to talk about four uh, future tenses. So let's begin with the information. So we have uh, some saying that we have four. Let me do something because we want to remember the uh, four future tenses. So we have here the four future tenses and I am going to write a sentence just to um, have it as an example. So we have the future simple, then we have the future continuous, then we have the future perfect, And then we have the future perfect continuous. And for the future simple, we have an example. And it says, I will live in Barcelona. We can say that in this case of the future simple, um, we use the will to uh, make statements or uh, have our sentence. That is the structure that we were uh, studying yesterday. Then for the future continues, we have, I will be living in Barcelona. In this case, it is easy to understand that when we use the word continuous, it's talking about the ing form of some verbs. And in this case, we have living using the ing form. Then we have the future perfect and we have the example. I will have live in Barcelona. So we are using the have and has with the uh, uh, past of the verbs. Then we have the future perfect continuous. That is, I will have been living in Barcelona. It is like a combination of the structures because we are using the have been or has been with the ing form of the verbs. So those are just examples for the four um, future tenses. It is just the examples. Now we are going to um, develop the four uh, future tenses one by one. So we are going to give uh, information about each of the future tenses and some examples. The number one, is the future simple. That is the number one in the, uh, in the table. So we have the future simple and it says, the future simple is used to talk about a time later, then now, and can be used to 
in lots of different ways. So in this case, in the number one, that is the future simple, we uh, have that is used to talk about a time later than now. It is not a long time in the future, it is uh, some time in this moment, uh, but that is in the future. Maybe in some hours, maybe in a day, maybe in two days or something like that. It is not a long time in the future. So we have some, um, we are going to talk about the form. It says in the number one, it is made of the verb. In this case, we um, know that in this case, it's not a verb. It is just an auxiliary or something like that, but we are going to say it like this in this case will or want, that is the contraction of the negative form of will. Plus the base form, base infinitive of the verb that we already know that is without the two. In this case, we are going to use it with the will and the verb. That is uh, the structure that we were studying yesterday. Then it says, because will is a model verb, remember it's a model verb, it doesn't change depending on the person doing the action. So it is a model verb and it doesn't change depending on the person doing the action. Number three, we can use the contractions. Number four, in the negative, we can also use will not for more emphasis. And number five, want is more common in speech. And the last one, in short answers, we say, yes, I will. Or, no, I want. Okay. These forms or uses in these cases, uh, we already studied them uh, yesterday and it is the same. Ayer estuvimos hablando sobre el wheel eh, y estuvimos viendo, ¿verdad? Todo esto que está eh, aquí en la forma. La número uno, it is made up of the verb will want and the base infinitive, que es la estructura que ya habíamos estudiado. Primero es, um, obviamente, the subject, then the will or want, and then we have the verb in infinitive without to. The number two, also, we studied this um, form yesterday, that is a model verb, and doesn't change depending on the person doing the action. In this case, we are not using will with the rule or the third person in singular. Number three, we can use contractions that we already know that we can use contractions with will. Number four, in negative, we can also use will not for more emphasis. In this case, it's to do it like more formal um, and we can use both forms, want or will not. That's not a, a specific rule in which um, they say that we can do it like this or like that. Number five, want is more common in a speech. So we were saying that want is more common when we 
speak, when we are speaking with other people, but in a writing form, it's better to write it like will not. But in a speech or a speaking, it's um, more common to hear the one. And in number six, in short answers, we say, yes, I will, or not, I want. That's really, really um, easy because we already studied the topic yesterday. So we have um, future simple in positive, negative statements and in question. We are going to write some examples for the three forms of future simple. So I'm going to do it like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. We have the positive. We have the negative. And we have the question. So in the positive one, we have, I will travel. Really simple, right? In number two, we have, you will travel the same. And then he will travel. She will travel. It will travel. Same. We will travel. In negative form, it is just the same sentence, but we are going to change this. And in this case, I am not going to write will not. I am going to write the contraction right this. So you want you want she want it want. They want travel and we want and for the question to you know that you are going to write the auxiliary first, then you are going to write the subject, and then you are going to write the verb. And in this case, it is very simple. So this is our question. Will I travel? Will you travel? Will he travel? Will she will it? Will they and will we? Okay, and that is the uh, complete forms of the three um, forms that we have in the future simple, the positive, the negative, and the question. That is really, really simple because it is almost the same. So in this case, we just change the negative form and the uh, structure of the question, but that is really simple. So uses and examples. We have the uses and we already know that. In this case, we are just talk about the uses because we already did something like that yesterday. So in the uses we have instant, instant, 
instant or spontaneous. Decisions. Future predictions. Based on belief. Promises. Offers. Requests. Threats. And future facts. So we use the uh, future simple or the structure wheel for instant or spontaneous decisions. In this case, something that we um, think in the moment. It is not something that we um, do for a long time. It's something that we decide in the moment. Then future prediction based on belief, what I think, what I am uh, trying to uh, say about a situation, then promises. I can make a promise using will for some things in the future that is not a long time in the future. It is something that can happen in that moment. Offers, if I say, um, in this case, if I uh, see someone that is tired, I can offer to do some, uh, some things for them. And in this case, it's uh, talking about the offers. Do something for someone. Then a request in this case um, is like asking for something uh, or uh, asking for help for someone. And we have a, a sentence. Will you tell Henry I call? It's like asking them if they can uh, do something for us. Then the threats, uh, in this case, in Spanish is amenazas or something like that. If you do that again, I will tell mom. If you do something bad, I will tell mom that you are doing this. So then we have the future facts. That is something that we uh, perform or something that we uh, do. In this case, we have an example. I will be back later tonight. I know that I am going to be late. So I am saying that I am going to do something in the future that is really, really um, not long, but in this moment, but later. Then those are the uses of the uh, simple, uh, the future simple. Then we have shall. In this case, we are not using the will. This is shall. And we have information about this uh, word that we use in the future tense. We can use shall instead of will. We can use it uh, like a replace for will. Podemos reemplazar el will con el shall. Eh, y está hablando del futuro. En este caso vamos a ver cómo y por qué podemos reemplazar will for shall. Okay, in this case, it says that shall is slightly uh, more formal. So in that, in that case, uh, we use will because it is like um, the more common or the most common uh, way to uh, talk about the future. But in this case, we can use shall and it is um, a way more formal. So it is almost the same. So we have an example. We shall never forget this beautiful day. Uh, 
It is also common to use shall in question to make offers. So in this case, we are using the word to make offers. Suggestion or ask for advice. In this case, we are asking for advice and we use the uh, shall, in this case, for asking that. That kind of things. So we have uh, an example. Shall I carry these bags for you? Shall I open the window? What shall I tell Mary about the broken base? So in this case, it's about a request, a request, offer, suggestion, or asking for um, an advice. So we are going to write like this. It is common to use shall in questions to make offers suggestions or ask for advice. And we have the example shall or carry these bags for you. Then we have, uh, we already studied the uh, structures of will and the going to. So in this uh, case, we are going to do like um, a comparison of be going to and will. So we are going to say, be going to versus will. Why we use the two structures for uh, speak about the future? So now we are going to see something about um, the uh, structure of be going to and will. And it is it says that it is important to know that for predictions based on evidence and future plans, we use be going to and not will. The difference or um, big difference between be going to and will is that in be going to, we use evidence and in a wheel, we use our thoughts. So that's like the difference or the bigger difference between be going to and wheel. Because in, in be going to, we use evidence to talk about something that will happen in the future. But in will, we are not using evidences. We are just um, saying something that we think, something that we um, imagine it will uh, happen in the future. So that's the difference between be going to and will. We can use them for uh, talking about the future and it is okay. But in that case that we have evidence to talk about something, or something that is going to happen, um, we are going to use be going to, but it is something that we uh, think if it is going to happen, we are going to use will. Then we have the second, um, the second uh, future tense, and it is the future continuous. So we have the future continues here. So it says, generally, we use
So in the future continuous, it says that we use this tense to talk about things in progress. Something is uh, that is happening right now uh, at a particular time in the future or something that is going to happen in the future. And we have the form or the structure that is will and want plus be plus the ing form of the verb. So in this case, we are going to use it will be or won't be. And we are going to use the verb in ing form. That is the continuous form. Then I'm going to write some examples. We have here the positive, the negative, and the question. I will be working, that's the sentence. I will be working. We have the will be plus the verb with the infinitive form. And we are going to the, do this in all of the sentences. You will be working, he will be working, she will be working, it will be working, and they. Because in these cases, it's not gonna change anything in the third person singular. Then we have the negative that is formed with one. I want be working. Okay, and then we have the questions. Again, we are going to change the structure for the question. And in this case, we are going to write the wheel, then the subject, then B, then the verb in ING. In this case, we are not uh, changing will be at the beginning of the sentence. We are going to separate them uh, for the subject. Will I be working? So in that case, the uh, structure is going to be separated by the subject. So this is the structure for the um, future continuous. So in this case, we are using the will be and the ing form of the verb. And in negative, it is the same, just adding one to the sentence to make it negative. And in the question form, we are just uh, changing the places. In this case, will is the beginning of the question, and then the, the subject, then the verb be, and then the verb with ing form. So for this uh, tense or this structure, what are the uses? We have different uses for this uh, future continuous. And the number one is an action in progress. at a specific 
sometime in the future. For example, we have um, at 5 p.m. of this day, not the next day or uh, in a month, in a year, maybe this day at 5 p.m. Then we have this time tomorrow. Then in two weeks. or in five years time. <clears throat> then we have the number two, an action we, we see as new or temporary. Then we have the number three, prediction or guesses about future events. Predictions about the present. and polite inquiries. So in the uses for this um, distance, that is the uh, future continuous, it says in the number one, that uh, it is about an action in progress. <clears throat> uh, at a specific time in the future, uh, for example, at 5 p.m. this time tomorrow, in two weeks, in five years time. And we have an example that it says, this time tomorrow, I will be flying to Barbados. In our cases, I did this time tomorrow, we are going to have the last uh, class for this session. So in that case, we are using the, um, the future continuous. Then in the number two, an action we see as new or temporary. In this case, we are going to say, I will be working for my dad until I find a new job. Something that is temporary, something that is new, but maybe we are going to change in the future. Then number three, prediction or guesses about future events. For example, he will be coming to the party, I guess. In this um, uh, use, it is not just a prediction, it is a guess. Um, in Spanish, we can say, is una, uh, estamos adivinando que algo va a pasar. No solo la predicción, sino que estamos tratando de adivinar qué va a pasar. En el ejemplo decía, él va a venir a la fiesta, yo creo. No, it is not something uh, that is going to happen. It's something that I think it's going to happen, or maybe it can it cannot happen in the future. Then we have prediction about the present, and we have a sentence: She will be getting married right now. I imagine. Estamos hablando de predicciones sobre el presente. Y el ejemplo, she will be getting married right now. Ella se está casando en este momento. I imagine, me imagino. Something that it's happening in this moment. And in the last one, polite inquiries. Will you be joining us for dinner? Nos acompañarás para la cena. Es like, um, in Spanish, inquiry is like a consulta. Es como, como consultarle a alguien. ¿Te vas a quedar a cenar con nosotros? In a form of question. Then we have um, something important to remember that is the steady verbs that we already studied before. Those steady verbs are in Spanish, uh, verbos estáticos. 
And it is important to remember that some verbs cannot be used in the continuous. Cuando estábamos viendo el tema del continuo um, in the weeks uh, uh, before, um, it says that some uh, verbs can work with the uh, with the pro, uh, yes with pro, continuous in this case and are the stative verbs. Los verbos estáticos no funcionan bien con lo que son los continuos um, o los tiempos continuos. In this case, with the ing form. And these verbs um, describe states, feelings, thoughts, and opinions. Esos verbos que nosotros conocemos como estáticos son aquellos que describen estados, sentimientos, pensamientos y opiniones. Instead of the future continuous, we use the future simple tense for these verbs. Con estos verbos estáticos no utilizamos el futuro continuo, sino que utilizamos el futuro simple. And we have some examples. I will be being. I am going to write the example here. Study verbs. We have this example, number one. We have, I will be being. In this case, we are using the uh, verb with the ing. A doctor in five years. This sentence is incorrect because we can use um, this verb with the ing form. The correct form of or writing or saying this sentence is, I will be, I will be a doctor in five years. Using the verb be in its base form. Then we have the another example. I will be knowing my results tomorrow. That's incorrect. And the correct form to say this sentence is, I will know my results tomorrow. The last one, this will be seeming like a distant memory this time this year. And that sentence is incorrect and we have the correct one. This will be, in this case is this will seem like a distant so this is just for remembering because we already studied the study verbs and the um the uses for the continuous tenses and in this case, it says, it says that it is not a, possible to use them together because it is not a correct the form in writing or saying those verbs in ing form. And just to remember, it describes states, feelings, thoughts, and opinions. Those verbs can be used with the ing form. Then I have an activity for this topic. So we have an activity to um, do something different and not just to uh, listening to this uh, explanation. So I have an activity. So I am going to uh, say what is the activity about and then I am going to put some 
mm, times in the screen. So this is a activity for practice. Um, what you have learned about the future continuous. All you have to do is talk about what you will be doing at these different points in time. So basically in this activity, you are going to see sometimes I have in five minutes to hours at 9 p.m. this time tomorrow, on Saturday morning, next Friday, in two weeks, next month at midnight on New Year's Eve. Tenemos tiempos. Tenemos tres, seis, nueve tiempos diferentes. En cinco minutos, en dos horas, a las nueve de la noche, a esta hora mañana, en la mañana del sábado, el siguiente viernes, en dos semanas, el próximo mes y en la medianoche de, eh, de la víspera de año nuevo. ¿Qué vamos a hacer con esos tiempos? Vamos a hablar de qué vamos a estar haciendo en esos diferentes puntos de tiempo o en esos tiempos diferentes. So you are going to have time to, uh, to think about actions or things you are going to do in those um, points of time. So I am going to uh, stop this and I'm going to put the, um, let me see, let me see, let me see, the image of the time and you are going to write the, the sentence and then we are going to perform. So let me have the image in the document, this one, and I am going to share the screen again. So I have the image, I'm going to share the screen. So we have here the squares. We have different times, there are nine times, and we are going to think in an action or something that we are going to perform or do in the future. And we have a immediate future that is five minutes to hours at 9 p.m. of this day. Then we have tomorrow and some times. So think about um, what you are going to do in the future. You uh, will have some time and then we are going to share our activities in those times. So in this moment, you have some time to think about the sentences using future continuous. The structure of future continuous is uh, the subject that is you, we are going to talk about the first person, and then the will or want plus B plus ING form of the verb. La estructura para el futuro continuo es el sujeto, el will o el want, más el verbo B, más el verbo en ING, con ING o continuo, en el complemento. So you are going to do your um, sentence with the future continuous. So think about the situations and then we are going to share the uh, sentences. Excuse me, teacher. Uh, Tell me. Uh, this activity is for for today. Yes. Okay.
we have some minutes, so I think maybe two or three sentences can we um, think of it. So don't worry if you can uh, do all the sentence, but maybe two or three. I finished teacher. Okay, you can share your sentence with uh, your partners right now. 
I'm sorry, teacher, I don't hear you. You can share your sentences. Ah, okay. In the first one, um, I will be brushing my teeth in five minutes. Okay, good. I will be sleeping in two hours. Nice. I will be finishing the English class at 9 p.m. I will be learning English at this time tomorrow. Good. In the last class. <laughs> in the last I class. Will on, <laughs> I will be working on Saturday morning. I, I will be working next Friday. Mm -hmm. I will be starting the next English course ah, in two weeks. Okay. I hope I will be celebrating my birthday next month. Oh, nice. And uh, I will be hugging my family at midnight on New Year's Day. Amazing. Excellent job. Thank you. Someone else? Hey, teacher. Tell me. Number one. Okay. We will be finished the class in five minutes. I will be go to Chicago next year. Okay. Remember that you have to add the ing form. I will be going. I will be going. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thanks, teacher. You're welcome. Number two, I will be going to Chicago next year. Okay. Oh, I think something happened. I don't know if, if, if all of you can uh, hear the sentence of Jimmy or is just sí. my case. Okay. Someone ah, else? Okay. Alguien más lo okay. puede escuchar porque a mí no me, no me aparecía el, el audio. No. No, teacher. No, I think something happened with your, your uh, audio. Paula? Okay, I can hear you now. Okay, okay. Uh, number four. Mm -hmm. My dogger will be going the college next Friday. Okay, good. Uh, number five, I will be going to sleep in two hours. Okay. Number six, uh, he will be drinks the medicine at 9 p.m. Okay, good. Uh, that is for teacher. Oh, that's good. That's good. Amazing. Thank you. Okay. We have one more minute, I think. Someone yes, else? Teacher. Oh, tell me. Number one, I will be brushing my teeth in five minutes. Okay. Number two, I will be sleeping in two hours. Okay. Number three, I won't be watching TV at night at 9 p.m. Okay. Number four, I will be working this time tomorrow. Okay. Number five, I will be visiting my parents on Saturday morning. Mm -hmm. Good. Number six, I will be cooking a special dinner next Friday. Mm -hmm. Number seven, I will be visiting my doctor in two weeks. Okay. Number eight, I will be uh, passing the next level next month. I hope so. <laughs> okay, that's good. And number nine, I will be praying to God at midnight on New Year's Eve. Okay, good. Thank you. So 
Tomorrow we are going to continue sharing our sentence for this activity. And remember that tomorrow is the last uh, session for this course. So um, we are going to end this, this course tomorrow. And I am hoping that you can have all the courses done and do an amazing work. So we are going to see each other tomorrow. That is the last uh, session for this course. So tomorrow we are going to start with this activity and then we are going to end the future tense and making the review of the other tenses. So now it's time to say goodbye. So have a good night and see you tomorrow for your last session. Thank you, Bye, everybody. Thank you, teacher. Good night. Good night.